Happening now, Albuquerque police are investigating their second police shooting in just three days. And just like Saturday's shootout, officers say they were forced to shoot an armed suspect on a busy stretch of road as people were getting ready to wrap up their work day. News 13 Samantha McDonald is on the corner of Central and Washington where it all began. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Elizabeth. Investigators are still trying to figure out exactly what happened here. Uh, it started with a call about a crash, and as you can see, the remnants of that accident are still here. And then it turned into a shooting. It all happened at about 4.45 p.m. yesterday when APD got reports of a driver crashing a silver Honda Civic into a light pole on Washington near Central. Witnesses say the driver ran away, heading east on Central and carrying a handgun. He went to a bus stop near Jefferson and Central and held up a woman who was with her seven-year-old grandson. Police say he then crossed the street, pointed the gun at another man with the intent to take his vehicle. At this point, an officer arrives on scene. Uh, the officer confronts this offender, and at that point, our officer discharges his firearm. APD isn't saying if the man pointed his gun at the officer or fired at him. And they won't say how many times the officer shot the suspect. They are in the process of interviewing the officer to find out exactly what happened. And fortunately, that officer wasn't hurt. His name has not yet been released. And the suspect is in the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Back to you. Okay, Samantha, thank you for that. Uh, also, Central was shut down for about four hours while investigators uh, comb through the crime scene. We're going to continue to follow what happened here and bring you the very latest as soon as we get some more information. Matt? Now on to the still developing news on the shooting from the weekend. Christopher Chase, a man behind Saturday's rampage, had a criminal past, but nothing that would suggest the shootout was on the way. And then there are his tattoos. We found out Chase's first major run-in with police was back in 2000. According to this police report, Chase was drunk and throwing a wheelchair onto Central Avenue. When police got there, he refused to cooperate, so the officer maced him. Now, aside from some minor traffic tickets, Chase kept his nose clean until 2004. It's when court documents show Chase ripped off his employer, that giant gas station. He eventually pled no contest after he was caught on video giving out $5,000 worth of money orders to a friend for just $100. Then Chase stayed off police's radar for nine years until this incident on Saturday. We do note that he has a tattoo on his body that says cop killer. But that's not the only tattoo Chase had. Other body art included the word juggalo and a hatchet man. Both tattoos are commonly associated with the band Insane Clown Posse. APD has not said what may have led to the violence. They are still looking into it. Well, we now know more than 80 officers charged into the line of fire on Saturday. One sheriff's deputy and three police officers were shot. APD officer Eric Martinez was one of them, and it wasn't a first for him. He had been shot in the leg during a drive-by in 2009 while on a domestic violence call. He fired back and wounded the suspect. Officer Martinez was honored for that. Then in 2010, he was the first on the scene at MCOR, arriving right after a man had... A gun, had gunned down six former co-workers there, killing two of them. There was people on the ground, there was people screaming, he's inside. Officer Martinez was hit in the leg by shrapnel from a bullet during Saturday's incident. He's fine now. The two other APD officers shot were Matthew Hannum and Daniel Morales. They too should be fine. Bernalillo County Sheriff's Deputy Robin Hopkins here is still in intensive care. The investigation into Saturday's shootout continues. APD says it could release more information tomorrow. But for all updates, be sure to stay with News 13 on air and online for continuing coverage. 535 now, if you keep up with the news, you know we have had a lot of violence against law enforcement here in New Mexico in the last week or so. It all started last Monday. It was on the 21st when convicted bank robber Cristobal Quintana led state police on a chase down near Roswell. He crashed his car. He opened fire, hitting a state police officer in the leg. Officers then killed Quintana. Then on Thursday, state police officer Joey Gallegos was shot in Española while tracking down a suspected thief. They say Rogelio Cisneros Chavez shot Officer Gallegos in the stomach. Chavez was killed, and state police say Gallegos is recovering. Bernalillo County's new emergency dispatch system costs more than a million dollars, but it doesn't work right. On special assignment last night, 
Our Matt Grubbs found out the Computer Aided Dispatch System, or CAD for short, is supposed to automatically send emergency information and alert tones to fire crews. It's supposed to be more efficient, letting unneeded crews rest during 24 hour shifts and quickly sending the right crews to the right emergency. But automatic alerts are not working properly and it's slowing down the system. And that's, that's always a problem we have in manually. That's the whole point where we wanted to do it automatically so that the CAD recommends the units, dispatches the units, and gets them rolling as fast as possible. And that's the whole key, getting everything out as fast as possible. Tonight at 9 on 2 Casa Fox, watch Matt Grubbs ask why the county rolled out the new system when they knew it had problems. Comfort and warmth. Well, that's exactly what a quilting club here in New Mexico is giving the families of the 19 firefighters killed in Arizona this summer and the sole survivor of that tragedy. The Hemes Mountains at Bear Paul Quilt Club made these quilts for the Granite Mountain Hot Shots. They battled the Thompson Ridge fire out in the Hemes and protected homes from that raging fire this summer. Well, we just are very uh, fortunate to have firefighters like this yes. in our community, and we just want to show our appreciation by making yes. these quilts. About a month or so after that, 19 members of the Granite Mountain Hotshots were killed when the wind shifted and a massive wildfire overtook them mm. near Prescott, Arizona.